if you're in a place where you are advise um, Africa's heads of state, uh, which you do, or if you are the super president and you have the priorities, mm -hmm. and I think perhaps this will be, the answer to this will come from the um, issues that you have itemized. Mm -hmm. What would be your, say, top two, three or four priorities to make it uh, move? The farmer is an entrepreneur. But a farmer is a private entrepreneur. It's extremely important. This is something that always depresses me. In every country I go and I hear that. Look at this. Uh, before the rainy season, the farmer gets up, looks for seeds, looks for loans, till the land, uh, sow uh, his or her grains, uh, spends time working on that piece of land. Under the hot sun, for three months, he or she is alone. The moment she or she harvests the maize, it's our maize. It's a farmer's maize. That his or her maize, right? It's not a collective good. It's a private good. There were times in most African countries where the government will tell the farmer not only at which price to sell, but at what time of the year to start to sell. To whom to sell. Who is allowed to buy, if anybody. There were times across many countries in Africa, 70s and 80s, where they will decide who is allowed to export or to import which good, who is allowed to access foreign exchange and who not, who could do business, who could not. The private sector crossed its arms. The farmers were struggling to make ends meet. No time to invest in land or soil, no time to look for better technology, for better seed. There was no money for it, right? There was a lot that was going on that discouraged the farmer that kept the private sector out. So to be extremely careful when we engage in policies, it is not a matter of pride, of sovereignty. It's a matter of hard, cold facts about people's livelihoods. Every decision we take affects a farmer's livelihood, affects the capacity of our economies uh, to do well. As a government, you have to start from that angle. Respect the maze of the farmer, just like you respect somebody who produces a spare part, or a car, or a TV, Yes, it's important for the country, just like the car we produce is important for the country. But what can I do for the farmer so he or she does more for our country? You don't do that by confiscate, confiscating his or her good, no. right? So that's the first thing, a new look and a fresh new look at the farmer. Then second, um, to look back and say, why are we where we are today in Africa? Why did we lose two decades? How did the recovery start? Never in the history of post independent Africa did we have so many countries growing at such high rates at the same time and for a sustained period. So it cannot be the global market, the government has been coming and going. But something happens in our economy that changes our capacity to take advantage of those things. That's where the secret is of what heads of states or government could look at. Okay, what did you change? So that's why my second would be less focus of where we have had positive change and figure out what are the factors behind the positive change. What do I learn from it? And how can I scale up and replicate positive change, right? And if you do that, it's extremely important. And you can do it now in all these different segments in conserving resources, in uh, innovating in terms of technology, uh, in encouraging the private sector, in conquering the urban markets, all those things, you will see positive change. If not in your country, your neighbor's country or outside of Africa and bring that into it, okay? The third area is technology. I would suggest to any government or any uh, heads of state to heavily invest in the technologies of tomorrow. We talk about GMO in a very passive mode. Do we take or don't we take? The rest of the world is dealing with it. We're just sitting here. Do I take, don't I take, as if we have the choice, right? What we should do is to ask ourselves, are we investing in the laboratories and the expertise to master biotechnology and harnesses for ourselves? If GMO becomes safe tomorrow, it will become safe. It's going to be part of agriculture tomorrow. Will we be way behind? Because we're talking about it as recipients, yes or no? Or will we be right in the middle of it? Because by then we have the critical mass of expertise, we have the laboratories and we're there to compete. Digital farming is another place. Our youth are gifted. They are enthusiastic about modern technology, but they cannot develop it themselves. 
as a head of state, as a government, am I creating an ecosystem? And more importantly, do I have the uh, institutional infrastructure for people to learn the trade? See, uh, agriculture, even farming, is a complicated business today. It's going to be more complicated tomorrow. The technologies of tomorrow are complex, right? Now, what do you find in our countries? We train the minister. We train the permanent secretary. We train the director general. We train the extension agents. We train the district officers. We don't train the farmer, right? The farmer has to use his or her God-given talent to move, right? If you had a 17-year-old son or daughter, say, Dad, I want to be a farmer and a productive and modern farmer. Where do you send her or him to learn the trade? If they say they want to be a plumber, maybe there's a place. They want to be an electrician, maybe there's a place, right? Or if you're today a farmer, you're doing, let's say, potato, and suddenly you discover there's a huge market potential in China or in Germany for, uh, let's say, papaya. How do you learn the craft of growing papaya? Where do you go? Trial and error? Losing money? Being discussed getting out? Why don't we mainstream professional and vocational training to upgrade and develop skills for all agricultural value chain professions? So that your 17-year-old daughter could say, Dad, I want to be a farmer. I'll say, of course, here is the trade school. Yes. Go for two years. You want to do horticulture? Or do you want to do floriculture? Or do you want to do livestock or aquaculture? Of course, yes. go. After two years, she can start a business. Our youth are gifted. They are enthusiastic about modern technology, but they cannot develop it themselves. As a head of state, as a government, am I creating an ecosystem that allows my young students, the girls and the boys, to innovate and create new tools that will move African agriculture forward? That's extremely important. Very, very well said. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Vadiane, thank you <laughs> very much for your time. Okay, okay. Appreciate it. You said, how do I say that? Jarajov. 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 Dr. Badiane. Okay, very thank good. Thank you so much thank for your you. time. All right.